everyone welcome back to our channel my name's Bri this is Ben and this is our giant African land snail slow so in today's video we're going to cover how to get <laughs> she's just sucked back into her shell <laughs> you don't like being on camera do you you being shy anyway Today's video is going to cover how to care for your giant African land snails. So again, this is going to be specific to the Fulica subspecies of snail, but you can use it and apply it to many different types of snail, as long as they're giant African land snails. So we're going to cover what to do on the daily, what to do on the weekly, and what to do monthly in order to care for your snails. So daily what I like to do is, first thing, I like to come and check my snails, and I like to make sure that the substrate is nice and damp. Having damp substrate is very important as a snail skin is very, very moist and they can sense the wetness of the soil through their skin. They don't like to dry out. So what I like to do is I spray the substrate with warm water at least once a day to make sure that it is nice and damp for them. You don't want it to be sopping wet because that's not a very good environment to keep them in either. And you don't want it to be too dry because again, that can dry out their skin and it's not particularly enjoyable for them. So I also like to take the temperature of the substrate at least once a day using a temp gun. Now, a lot of people have dial thermometers in their enclosure, which is fine, but these can be quite inaccurate. Using a temp gun is accurate up until the degree uh, of the temperature that the soil is. So they're much, much more accurate and that way you get an exact reading of how warm your warm side is and how cool your cool side is and they are very precise. So I would recommend using one of those whenever you take the temperatures inside your enclosure. She's very curious now. She wasn't having it before, she wasn't playing ball, but now she's quite curious. She wants to know what's going on. So every day I like to check that my snail's food bowl is nice and full and I top it up if it's looking empty. Snails are amazing. They are nature's dustbins and in the wild they've been recorded eating over 500 different species of vegetation, which is just crazy. It's so cool. So in captivity, we like to offer them as much variety as possible to try and replicate this where we can. So you'll want to feed your snails a lot of leafy greens, a lot of vegetables and a little bit of fruit as a supplementation to try and give them as many nutrients as possible and keep them nice and healthy. So what I tend to do is I tend to feed on rotation. So one day I might offer courgette, one day I might offer sweet potato, one day I might offer mushrooms and so on and so on and rotate them out in turn. This means that you avoid having a picky snail who will deliberately find their favorite items, eat those and then avoid the rest. If you feed one thing at a time, they will get a much more varied diet and they will be a lot healthier and happier for it. Won't you? Yes. <laughs> Look at her, she's just going off. So as well as the food that we include in their enclosure every day, it's also a good idea to make sure that your snails have a constant supply of cuttlefish. Now, cuttlefish, as we've already covered, is an essential building block of the snail's shell. They need it in order to stay healthy and survive and cuttlefish eventually will be devoured by your snails quite rapidly and it will run out. Now, cuttlefish originally will be a kind of creamy white in color and eventually it can start to go off. So eventually it will kind of fade to a pinkish reddish color at which point you will want to throw it out and put a new cuttlefish bone in. Your snail might already by that point have eaten it right, right down to the bone. Um, at which point it would be a good idea to throw that away and to replace it with a new one as well. So that's definitely something that's worth checking on the daily. So when you check in on your snails every day, it's a good idea just to make sure that they're sleeping, that they're content, that they're doing their own thing. So you'll find that your snails could be active at any time of the day. I personally tend to find that my snails are most active in the early morning and in the evening, so generally about dawn and dusk. However, they aren't strictly diurnal or nocturnal, so you might find that they're active at any time of the day. Your snail may well, when it's sleeping, burrow itself down into the soil, which is why having a nice high soil level that they can completely dig under is very important. This is completely normal. They might do it for a day, two days, up to a week or even more, and they will be perfectly happy and content. They may also sleep on the walls. They may sleep out in the open. 
but all of this is completely normal. Now, if a snail is buried for several days and you start to get concerned, it may be because they are laying eggs, which we'll cover in just a second, but it might also mean that they are hibernating. So if you don't see your snail for a week or a couple of weeks and you start to feel concerned, then it is okay just to gently uncover them and check the edge of their shell. So where their body usually comes out of their shell, instead of being their body, there will instead be a seal. Now, if they are hibernating, instead of seeing their normal flesh, you will instead see a little seal like this. Now, this is made up of mucus, thick mucus, and it is just the snail's way of blocking itself off from the outside world and keeping itself nice and moist in there and nice and snug like a little nest until the conditions outside improve. This might mean that your tank's temperature is a little bit too cold or a little bit too dry and so it's best that if this happens to double check your conditions before disturbing your snail and it is much much better to let the snail come out of hibernation by itself than by trying to wake it up by giving it a bath for example or spraying it for example like it's much much better to leave the snail alone and fix the conditions and then see if your snail emerges. So in the next section we're going to cover what you need to do for your snails weekly in order to take care of them. We've already discussed feeding them and that feeding them should consist a lot of vegetable matter and greens. It also needs to consist of some protein because in the wild snails are opportunists and they will eat just about anything, won't you? And that includes rotting vegetation, rotting animal matter and even poo. So they have a very varied diet, a lot of gross things actually, but it's very important that we try and replicate that and that we do include some protein. So once or twice a week you should provide your snails with a protein mix. These are available as ready-made mixes from several places on the internet. You can get them from Etsy, you can get them via the groups on Facebook. There is a lot of people who will do a ready-made mix and it's really easy and cheap to get hold of. Now, if you can't get hold of mix for any reason, other good sources of protein that you can use include raw mints, for example. Now, I wouldn't recommend leaving the raw mints in there for any prolonged period of time, perhaps just providing each snail with a small portion and then removing it when the snail loses interest. Now, this is gruesome, but you can also consider using pinky mice, for example, as a protein source, However, because it's a little bit gross, I personally don't do it. I like to stick to the mix, but that's up to you. There are several sources of protein that aren't suitable for snails, and this mainly includes things like egg. Uh, some people have had success feeding egg to their snails. However, a lot of people have also known egg to cause fatalities in snails. So egg is best to be avoided as a protein or as a food source for your snails. Some other sources of food to avoid would be any kind of citrus fruits. They're a big no-no for snails. So any lemons, any oranges, not good at all. And anything that's like onions or garlic, we don't want for our snails. They're not very good, not healthy, and they could actually make your snails quite poorly. So they're best avoided too. So something else that it's very important to do weekly is to make sure that you churn up the soil in the enclosure. And this is very important for two different reasons. The first being that when you spray down the substrate, what can happen is a lot of the water can go right down to the bottom and form a very sodden layer and the top then stays quite dry. So what you want to do is mix it up in order to keep the substrate nice and damp the whole way through and your snails will be a lot happier for it. The second reason is that snails are absolutely prolific breeders and they can lay literally hundreds of eggs at a time, which can be quite scary, really. If snails were going to take over the world, they could do it quite easily <laughs> just by breeding. So basically, you want to check for clutches definitely weekly at least because in the summer months what can happen is those eggs can hatch very very quickly and you'll want to catch the eggs before that happens. So if you do find a clutch of eggs, what I tend to do is get a sandwich bag, locate the clutch and thankfully all of the eggs will be laid in one place. Then I use the sandwich bag to remove them. 
I freeze them for at least 24 hours and then I crush them in order to dispose of them. Now, this is very, very important so that you don't become overwhelmed and you don't end up with a population boom, which is very important when keeping snails, it can quite quickly get out of hand. So disposing of the eggs when they're eggs is very, very important. So say the worst happens and you discover that your snails have had a clutch, you haven't found them in time and now you have hatchlings everywhere, which is quite common. It does happen and first of all, don't panic. It is important to remember that in the wild, snails have hundreds of eggs at a time because predators see snails as a very tasty snack. So many of these snails, when they're born, will not have the best shaped shells. They will not be the best form. They will suffer from internal differences sometimes that mean that in the wild, predators pick them off. Now, in the wild, this isn't a problem. However, in captivity, many of these snails then survive, they go on to breed, and then their offspring are gradually less and less healthy, which is a huge shame. Um, these snails are incredible, and in the wild, they have a lifespan of about 10 years. Though, unfortunately, in captivity, and it's serious, but it has to be said, their lifespan is now about five years because unfortunately the genetics have gradually got weaker and weaker by the whole clutch being allowed to survive and then go on to breed. You may find that you have a snail that has some um, differences in its shell and in fact slow here you can see her shell is not the best formed and it's important that she has the best life possible and that I provide her the best po uh, possible care. However, it's very important that she is not allowed to breed because while her shell might be slightly damaged, her offspring's shells could be extremely damaged and so we wouldn't want to cause any unnecessary suffering in those snails. Therefore, if you do have a clutch hatch, the kindest thing to do is to find a reptile shop or sometimes wildlife rescues because hedgehogs like snails, um, sometimes finding an organisation like this to help give those hatchlings to another creature and to make sure another creature's life is fulfilled is the kindest thing that we can do. And that if you are thinking of breeding snails and you're serious about it, that you look at imported fullickers. So fullicker species, fullickers that have come straight from the wild that are healthy, that are strong, and then going through a rigorous breeding process with those to make sure that our lovely babies in captivity get longer, longer lives and are much healthier going forward in the future. So unfortunately that is a serious topic to talk about, but it's important that when you think about getting snails, you know every single aspect of their care and what it involves. And while it's sad, it's very important. And if you're committing to your snails, you are also committing to every aspect of their care. Anyways, moving on, we will now cover monthly to bi-yearly care. So when it comes to cleaning out a snail's tank, the good news is that you don't actually need to do it very often. Snails love a bit of dirt and that has multiple meanings. <laughs> so they love living in soil. It's nice and damp, it's nice and warm and it provides them the perfect habitat. And it's best to let that dirt get dirty, to let a bit of bacteria stay in it, to let some microorganisms work their way through and aerate the soil. That is truly the best climate that a snail can live in. So if you have a cleanup crew, this makes things a lot easier because every time your snails toilet, the cleanup crew will come along and do just that, clean it up. And it's best if you can help it to avoid changing the soil out fully. So monthly or six monthly, depending on how many snails you have and how dirty the enclosure is, if you are going to change the soil, it is a good idea to do it in parts. So I personally would never recommend taking out more than half of the soil at any time unless you have a good reason to. What is a good reason? Well, sometimes what can happen is you might find the mold starts to grow or a fungi starts to grow, in which case, if it's an unknown mold or fungi, it is definitely best to remove it just to be on the safe side. And that would require a more thorough soil change as would an infestation of pests. So we'll cover pests in a different video, but things like nematodes or things like mites that are very, very small and really pesky and annoying, 
Um, if you have an infestation of any of those, that also might require a more thorough clean out and full soil change. However, in normal circumstances, try to avoid that and just refresh the substrate as needed. Just take a little bit out, replace it with a bit of clean and the snails will make light work of it, working their way through, sliming all over it and getting it nice and dirty. So when you are cleaning out your tank, I would avoid using any harsh chemicals, any disinfectants, anything like that, because snail skin is permeable for chemicals, which means that anything that they touch could actually damage them. Um, and I forgot to say it earlier, but it's very important to remember that when you give them their food, any food must be thoroughly, thoroughly washed because any chemicals on the food could also damage them. And we definitely wouldn't want that. So when I'm cleaning the snail enclosure, one thing that I do a little bit more often is I wipe down the glass sides of the tank. Now this is mainly for my benefit because no one likes to look through 10 layers of mucus when they're looking into their tank. It's a little bit gross. And also if you clean it down, the snails will have a nice clean surface to go over should they wish to get away from the dirt for a while. So it's also beneficial for them. So what I do is I get a little bit of kitchen roll, I get a little bit of water and I go over the side of the tank just nice and easy and remove all of the substrate. And by doing that, you'll have a lovely view of your snails and they will have a lovely view of you. So with that being said, thank you so much for watching our video. This one is gonna take off back to her alien spaceship because she seems to be heading skyward. <laughs> thank you so much to everyone who commented and liked our last video. We will of course be doing more and feel free to check out our Instagram at Leaves Eaten, which we've linked below, where we will show you a couple more of our really cool pets and you can find out more about them. And we also have a Teespring store with really cool designs, aren't they? Cool designs such as this tortoise one. And we'll have more coming soon. So stay tuned and thank you guys so much. See you soon, bye. That's cool.